five all ins, four flush draws, three queens, two ace kings, and one giant pot to end the night. You don't want to miss it. Check it out. What's up, guys? Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, my name is Kenichi with KN Poker. And if you're here to follow a poker vlogger through his journey through low to mid six cash games, then you are at the right spot. Make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you get the latest and greatest straight hot off the press. I want to wish you guys a happy new year. Hopefully 2021 is better than 2020. Today, we go to Banker's Casino one more time. I know you guys want to see some hands, so let's just hit the felt. This video was created for entertainment purposes only. By no means am I a professional poker player. The following video is not intended to teach nor train, but rather to provide a look into my journey. Please gamble at your own risk. Okay, guys, we're going to dive right into this with the mystery hand. Just like before, we're going to be going through the progressions pre-flop, flop, turn, and river while keeping our hand concealed. This will be multiple choice, so let's see if you can get it. We are under the gun plus one, and we make it 15 to go. The cutoff button and big blind all call. So we're going four ways to the flop, which is queen, nine, six, rainbow. We check the cutoff bets, 45, and the button calls, we come along as well. So now we're going three ways to the turn, and it is the queen of spades. We check, the cutoff now checks, and now the button bets, 75. The cutoff is about 900 effective to us, and the button has about 240 behind his bet. We elect to raise to 350. Cutoff folds, and then the button calls for all in. The river runout is the three of clubs. He shows Jack Nine offsuit. What do we have? Do we have A, Jack Ten of Spades? B, Queen Jack of Diamonds? C, Ace Nine off? Or D, Pocket Sixes? Let me know what your guess is in the comments below, and we will revisit this hand later in the video and reveal what we have. Let's see if you can put us on a hand. We're looking down at Ace King off, under the gun plus one, under the gun min raises to 10, and we pop it to 40. The cutoff cold calls the 40. It gets back to under the gun, and he makes the call. So we're going three ways to the flop of King 8, 6, with two spades. Under the gun checks, and we have to protect our hand while, you know, not overextending. So we bet 50. The cutoff calls and under the gun folds. So we're going heads up to the turn, which is the nine of clubs. This is a tricky card because it brings in some additional draws, but we still have to continue firing out on this board. We size up to 155, trying to deny equity from all spades and straight draws. He quickly calls. We are about 610 effective at this point, and now we're hoping for a safe river. The dealer puts out the eight of hearts. This river is a great card for us because we don't put him on an eight calling the turn unless he has like eight, seven off. He called a small pre-flop three bet, so he probably doesn't have that type of hand. We're hoping he has a hand like maybe king queen that he can call off here. He's a very sticky opponent, and he sometimes overvalues his hands. So we make the decision to go for all of it and try to double up off of a weak king. He pretty quickly snap folds his hand face up and shows jack 10 of spades. That hand definitely makes sense and it would have been hard for us to lay it down here if he had a queen on the river. So good thing he missed all his draws. In this hand, we have queen 10 off in the cutoff. It folds to us and we raise to 15. Small blind and big blind both call. The flop is Jack 9 4 Rainbow. We just flopped OE. They both check and we C bet to 20. We don't mind a call here since we have a lot of equity and position on both of them. It doesn't look like this hand will go any further as both of our opponents put in the fold. Okay, so we're on the button with 10 7 of hearts. There's one limper and we raise to 20. Small blind, big blind, and the limper all call four ways to the flop of Jack, six, deuce with two hearts. We flop a flush draw. It is a small one, but it's still a flush draw. To our surprise, the small blind leads into the field for 25. The big blind calls and we call. 
So we're going three ways to the turn and it is not a good one for us. It's the Ace of Diamonds. Small blind checks and now the limper fires out 100. He only has about 105 behind so implied odds are now thrown out the window. We also don't know if the small blind is playing tricky and going to check raise in this spot so we just let it go. Ace deuce of hearts now in the big blind. There's a limp under the gun and the button raises to 25. We call and the limper calls. The flop is king 5-3 with two hearts. This is a really good flop for us since it gives us the NFD and a gut shot to the straight. We play in flow and check. It gets checked around and we're hoping for a good turn and hope no longer the turn is the jack of hearts. Now we just want to size up and get some value. So we bet 60. Both players call. This is a perfect situation. One could have a smaller flush or maybe one has two pair, maybe even a set. Who knows? We're looking for a safe river. And it doesn't get any safer than the queen of spades. Now let's get some money out of these guys. We place a bet of 155. Hopefully one of them gets sticky. Nope. Unfortunately, they both fold, but we rake in a nice pot. We're in the cutoff with King 10 of diamonds. There's a limp under the gun and we race to 25. Under the gun and big blind both call. So we're going three ways to the flop of Jack four deuce with two diamonds. It gets checked to us and obviously we have to place a bet here. So we bet 35. The big blind quickly raises us to 100 straight with about 280 behind. This is an easy decision. We call the additional 65 and under the gun folds. So now the turn brings the king of clubs. It's a decent card, but once he checks into us, it turns into an amazing card. No need for the flush anymore. We probably have the best hand with a pair of kings at this point. So we down bet to 80 to induce him to make a mistake and maybe pile in the rest of his chips. And guess what? That's exactly what he does. From the outside looking in, it doesn't feel like we're ahead and it feels more like we're getting trapped because of his check jam on the turn. But our read on this particular opponent was that he likes to pounce on weak bets and put people to the test. With that said, we make the call and the river is the Jack of Hearts. Wow, that's not good. He confirms it after showing Queen Jack off. Man, we got exactly what we wanted. Just a bad run out. Now we see King Jack off in the small line. Button limps and we race to 20 to isolate the button and kick out the big blind. Big blind folds and the button calls. So we're going heads up to a flop of Queen Jack 9 Rainbow. Pretty connected board but we continue with our story um, and we place a down bet of 15. The button calls. The turn brings an interesting card. It's the Queen of Hearts, which pairs the top card and brings in the BDFD. This card might seem bad, but it's actually a good sign because it's less likely he's holding a queen. So we bet 20 and he makes the call. We're looking for a Brick River. We couldn't ask for a better one since it's the Five of Clubs. Now we need to find a bet that can extract value. If we put him on a 10, then we need to check and throw him the rope, but based off of his calling patterns and intervals, we put him on a weak hand. And we follow up with the same bet of 20. He basically snap calls and shows us his hand, which is ace nine off. We show our hand and take down this pot. We pick up smoke in the cutoff. There's a limp under the gun and we race to 25. Button calls, big blind calls, and the limper calls. So we're going four ways to the flop. Dealer puts out queen, queen, four with two hearts. We just flop the nut trips. This is obviously a very strong holding, but it's hard for somebody else to have a hand here as well. So 
it gets checked to us and we check to allow somebody else to show some aggressive action. This is also how we would play it multi-way if we had something like ace high or maybe a middle lane pocket pair. So the button allows it to get checked through. We go to a turn, which is the ace of hearts. This is the perfect card because the front door flush comes in and it's an ace. People don't like to fold a pair of aces. So when it gets checked to us, we place a bet of 65, a little more than half pot, hoping somebody has a flush or the king of hearts that might come along. Well, they all fold. This is just an example of us covering too much of the board, so it's really hard to get any value out of it. In this next hand, we have ace, jack of diamonds and the hijack. Under the gun limps and we raise to 20. It folds to the big blind and he calls. Limper folds. So we're going heads up to a flop, which is a deuce, five, seven, rainbow. We whiff this board and after he checks, we just check back. There's very few cards that we can fire a second barrel on if he calls a flop bet. And the turn actually does bring one of those cards. It's the Jack of Clubs. He checks and now we down bet to 15. He's checked twice, so the likelihood that he has a hand that he can continue with is super low. But to our surprise, he snap calls. Pretty interesting spot, and I'm just trying to figure out what type of hand to put him on. Maybe some sort of backdoor clubs or maybe pocket pair, but the jack ruined his plans. I don't know. Either way, the river brings the king of diamonds, and now he checks for the third time. It's going to be hard for him to show up with a king here, so... We can comfortably bet for value. We fire out 25 and he snap calls again. We show our hand thinking that we're good. And he confirms that by tapping his hand on the table and releasing his cards. Okay, now we look down at ace king off under the gun plus one and we raise to 20. We get three bet to 60 by the button. It gets folded to us and we elect to put in the flat call. Don't really want to bloat up the pot OOP with this hand like the last vlog and get torched again. So he's been three betting a lot in position and has a wide range with this type of action. So we can navigate easily against him if we hit a pair. The flop comes down six, six, three. We check and he checks back. The turn is the Jack of Diamonds. We check again with the intention of calling almost any reasonable size bet, but he checks back again. Now we're confident that we're ahead of his hand. The river brings another six. We lose to all pocket pairs, but if he had one, we probably would have heard from him on the flop or turn, especially in position. We are now turning our hand into a value hand, targeting all weaker aces and possibly even a big king to call us here. We bet super small, a bet size of 20. He doesn't think for long and makes the call. We show and we're good. So we pick up smoke one more time under the gun. We race to 15, middle position calls, button calls, big blind calls. We're going four ways to the flop, which is queen, eight, seven, rainbow. Big blind leads into the field for 25. We raise to 55 to push out all the riffraff and play this hand in uh, position heads up. It folds to the big blind and he makes the call. The turn is the six of hearts. He now fires a hundred into us. This is a very weird line because it's basically the opposite of the stop and go, right? He's pulling the go and go. Our hand is way too strong to fold here. Even with this line, we need to peel one more card and reevaluate the river. So we call the river is the five of spades. This brings the one liner to the straight and without much hesitation, he bets 110. We label him as a volatile player, but when he's leading into us all three streets, it's hard for him to have a weaker hand than us, especially when the river completes a lot of straight draws. With all this said, we reluctantly fold and 
He's nice enough to show us the goods. He had pocket eights. Now, his bet on the river was probably maybe a blocker bet, but not sure if a raise here would have had any type of fold equity. If the river was a safe card, like a offsuit three or something, we probably would have paid off the $110 bet. All right, jack seven of spades in the hijack. There's one limper and we over limp. Button limps and the small blind makes it 32. Weird bet, I know. Most places only allow increments of $5 when playing a 3-5 game, but this place allows us to get a little fancy with our bets, so 32 it is. Big blind calls, we call, and the button calls. So we're going four ways to the flop of 733 Rainbow. It actually checks all the way to us, and now we bet 60. Seems as if nobody wants to spot. Only the small blind calls. The turn is a beautiful one. It's the seven of diamonds. If there was any question that we were behind, this card answered it. But now, what can the small blind have by checking this flop? He only has about 110 behind. He might have a three or just a pocket pair. This particular player is known for calling off light. So we down bet to 40 to keep his entire range in and get a call. But he doesn't do that. No. He doesn't fold. He piles it in for 110 total. It's probably going to be a chop pot. So we just make the call. The river is the ace of hearts. And he announces, I have nothing. We quickly turn over our hand. And we win. He shows king ten of spades. And there wasn't even a flush draw. Guys, the game is still good. All right, guys, so unfortunately, I didn't get this hand on video, but I do want to go over this hand because it's a pretty interesting one. So we look down at Jack-10 of diamonds on the button. Under the gun, raises to 25. Everybody calls. It's a family pot. So we go to a flop of King-8-8, eight, eight, two diamonds. Under the gun, bets 95 into basically the field. We call... And we're actually the only ones that call. So we're going heads up to a turn. The turn brings the three of clubs. Now, obviously, if he has a big hand, this is a safe card for him. He's a fairly tight player. So we put him on either aces, ace, king, or king, queen is probably at the bottom of his range, especially since he declares same bet on the turn. So he fires out another 95. A lot of the times he's not going to be double barreling with anything less than king, queen. And even King Queen, he's the type of guy to kind of check back or check into us. So we see that he is about 900 behind. We have very good implied odds. So we make the obvious call. The river peels off. And I don't even look at the river card. I'm just looking at him. I'm trying to see if I can get a tell. I know since he has such a strong hand, hopefully not a full house, that he's probably going to bet any river card unless it's a diamond so he looks at the river card and he checks which gives us a little bit of excitement and we look down and it's the seven of diamonds we just banked the flush and he checked into us probably doesn't have a full house but he probably does have a big hand so this was one of the last hands of the night everyone's kind of racking up and i thought well let's get some value out of him he is a pretty sticky opponent, but he might not call the rest of his chips. So let's get 385 out of him. So that's what we bet. We bet 385. He kind of hymns and haws, sighs. He's really disgusted by that river card. And then he just puts in the call. We show our hand and we are good. We take down this pot. Okay, guys, do you remember what hand you put us on for the mystery hand? Let's recap the action real quick and find out the correct answer. We are under the gun plus one and we make it 15 to go. Cut off, button, and big blind, all call. So we're going four ways to the flop of queen, nine, six, rainbow. We check, the cutoff bet's 45, the button calls, and we call. So now we're going three ways to the turn, which is the queen of spades. We check, the cutoff checks, and now the button bets 75. 
the cutoff is about 900 effective and the button has about 240 behind his bet we raise to 350 cut off folds and then the button calls so the river run out is the three of clubs he shows jack nine off what do we have here are the choices again do we have jack ten of spades queen jack of diamonds ace nine off or pocket sixes the correct answer is queen jack of diamonds if you got this right hit that like button if you didn't post in the comments below what you thought we had all right guys thanks for watching this video once again if you liked what you saw please smash that like button and hit subscribe Hopefully everyone has a better 2021, better than the 2020 that we uh, just experienced. But until then, don't be ducking it. Run like you saying Bolt.